Hey everybody, welcome back. This is photo class number 30, taught by yours truly, Carmine from New York. All right guys, uh, today's shout out, I want to get right into it. It's very important. I'm very excited. In Michigan, you will find a photographer, a film photographer, who takes the most beautiful portraits I have ever seen. This is a young guy, full of energy, full of creativity, who will take a camera, take it with him, and take portraits that are just beautiful. You have to go to his channel. You have to subscribe to him. You have to watch every video he's ever made. If you are a serious analog photographer or a digital photographer as well. Please go see the work of Volandis. His YouTube photography channel, I'll spell it V U H L A N D E S. Volandis. He is cutting edge in photography. He inspired this dude with 48 years of photography under his belt to make this video about him. Yesterday, uh, today's January 5th, 2022, I watched this video. His video was about the RZ67 by Mamiya. And he said it was the best portrait camera out there in the analog world. Well, you know what? I watched that video as, as I do all of his videos. And I thought, you know what? He's right. I had the RB67 weighed in at seven pounds walking around with that. After a while, you realize your hands are getting cramped. And if you watch his latest video about the RZ67 that came out yesterday, you'll notice, I noticed, Valandis, you had to switch hands, put the camera in your left hand and shake Shake your right hand because that SOB camera, that hurt. So what I used to do with my RB67 is put it on a camera strap. This way, at least your hands don't cramp up and then your neck hurts. So with my camera, the RB67, the bellows, as usual, ended up getting pinhole leaks, but I fixed it for five bucks. And I want you guys to, anybody that's out there with a bellows camera, keep in mind, Hope is not lost. You do not need new bellows. You do not need to replace your bellows if they're pinholes. If it's a tear, you need new bellows. But if they're pinholes, where the where the bellows keep opening, closing, opening, closing, you do that with anything, it's going to eventually get weak and make a hole. Remember my trick. You go to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot, you go to a hardware store, you go to the electrical aisle, you buy liquid black electrical tape. It comes in a jaw. You open it up. It looks like black pudding. You take a paintbrush. That's why I keep them right here. Take, take an Otis paintbrush. You dip it in the black electrical paint, black electrical tape. You coat the entire bellows, giving extra dabs to the corners where there's the light leak. You let it dry overnight. It shrinks. It looks beautiful. You do it again. You do that five times. Apply it. Wait overnight. Apply it. Wait overnight. Then put the camera aside after you've done that. Put it aside for two weeks, three weeks. Guaranteed, your light pinhole light leaks are gone. Okay? I have a video out on that. Check it out. So, why does Volandis, this young guy from Michigan, inspire this old guy? I'm going to tell you why. He talks about the Leica M6, Kodak Portrait 400, the Leica SL2, the Hasselblad 500 CM. All right. He doesn't just hold it up and talk about it. He takes it out in the field. He shows you how he uses it to take those portraits, those knockdown, beautiful, gallery worthy portraits. Valandis. Remember that name. Go to his YouTube photography channel. V-U-H-L-A-N-D-E-S. 
All right. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. So he inspired today's video about saying that the Mamaya RZ67 is the best portrait camera. He's right. He's right. The quality of those six by seven negatives are incredible. Medium format is the way to go. I love 35 millimeter photography. I shoot 35 millimeter photography. I shoot 120. I shoot six by six, six by seven. But Volandis, we're going to talk about six by nine today. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into it. Six by nine photography. Medium format using 120 film is the step right before you get into large format. 4x5 negatives, 5x7, 8x10, 11x14. Oh yeah, there's 11x14 Bellows cameras out there. Large format. Okay? And, and beyond. Do a little Google search on the largest large frame, large format camera ever made. It took a photograph of back in the day of cowboys. All right. It took a photograph so big. The negative was so big that it had to be transported on train tracks. Okay, I think it was 10 foot by 10 foot. All right, check it out. Anyway, let's get into it. We're going to talk about the beautiful Fujika. Get it right. The Fujika 6G690. All right, this version is the BL version. The BL stands for breech lock. Okay, so before we get into this right the six by nine rangefinder medium format four and a half pound all metal giant okay let's get into why why was this camera developed by fuji in 1969 okay i have my notes here and we're going to go through it in the 60s in japan the tourist trade was blowing up the photographers that took photographs of tourists in front of different landmarks all around japan they would take their photographs they remember that this is before digital take their photographs usually groups right they would go on their tour the photographer now had to take that film go develop it print it and if there were 40 people in the group and everybody prepaid for their photo, if you didn't come back for it, you didn't, you were out of luck because you're prepaid. They would take the film, develop it, make 45 by sevens or eight by tens, and have them ready when the tour got back in two and a half hours. Now, here's the problem: they were using 35 millimeter cameras. As you know, 35 millimeter cameras, you needed to use a 24 exposure roll or a 36 exposure roll. It's too many. It's too many wasted frames when you're only going to take three pictures of the group right they would take three different exposures and the group would go on their way and if there were no other groups around they had to take that film go in waste the other 20 frames or 30 frames wasted wasted film develop it and print it so they needed to have a camera Number one, with better resolution. Because when, you when you're taking a group of 20, 30, 40, 100 people on these tour groups from Australia, America, all around the world, people want to be able to see their face clearly. And with a 35 millimeter negative, when you have a group of 100, sometimes the detail is lost, especially if it's a cloudy day. So, they needed the, the photographers in the tourist trade in Japan. 
reached out and said, give us a camera with higher resolution, 6x9, and didn't require to throw away 20 frames, 120. Okay? So, Fuji came up with the Fuji G690. Okay? This is a medium format, 6x9 film camera. Okay? You open up the bottom, give it a twist, the back opens. Okay? And there it is. The gigantic 6x9 frame right there. Okay? You would, the photographers out in Japan doing the tourist trade, boom, 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 three shots. If there was another group, another three shots, boom, done, in, go, develop the film, make the enlargements. Gorgeous, because when, here's the whole point of the story when you use a medium format, okay? Your photograph is already this big. So you don't have to enlarge it that much to make a 5x7. A 35 millimeter, right, which would be about this big, right, take up about this much. You have to enlarge it six times to get it this big already, all right, and then beyond to make a 5x7 or an 8x10. So every time on the enlarger, right, you crank it up, you're cranking that head up to make it bigger and bigger and bigger, you're spreading out all the information, right? All that silver halide crystals are now moving away from each other. And that's detail that's being separated, okay? So, that's how this camera came to be. Now, Fuji being Fuji, right? They're around today still, right? Fujifilm, all their cameras, great cameras, okay? They said, okay, we get you. You need us. You need a medium format camera, okay? That you're used to using 35 millimeter cameras. Look at this film advance. All right, does that look familiar to all the 35 millimeter film shooters out there? They used the technology of film advance of a 35 millimeter camera and put it here. Next, rangefinder. Bright, clear, humongous viewfinder. Okay? And the other mirror for the rangefinder is over here. That's a nice separation. All right? There are others, right, that have the, the other lens from here, right? The viewfinder here, and the mirror is all the way over here, right? This one, all right? Gives you a little bit better focus. But this design, it works. All right? Let's talk about the rangefinder. How about this? How about when you focus, okay, from its minimum about three and a half feet to infinity, you have parallax correction because you're looking here, but the lens is here, right? You don't want to be taking a photograph close looking through here and the lens is looking at something else. How about this? Automatic parallax correction. As you look through here and focus, the lines, the framing lines, move. They move back and forth, back and forth as you focus. As you get closer to your subject, the parallax correction moves it in. As you focus out to infinity, the framing lines come back. Unreal. Okay? Now, they needed a sturdy camera. These are for, this was for photographers that are going to use this eight hours a day, seven days a week. Hand it off to their coworker. All right, all right, here. You go take the pictures while I go develop the film and make the prints. Uh, he comes back. Tag team. They needed an indestructible medium format camera. Okay, so now some groups are groups of two. So they might want portraits. Simple vertical pictures, right? Let's get back to the RZ67. You don't need to rotate the back. That's what the R comes from in RZ and RB on your Mamayas, rotating back, okay? Here, because the camera, right, was modeled after a Leica. In fact, it was modeled after the Leica M6, right? 
nice and narrow, right? Simple. Boom. There's your vertical. There's your landscape. Now, they knew that groups of two, getting back to groups of two, a couple, right? They might want a portrait taken, okay? So, they said, you know what? Let's come up with a whole line of lenses for this camera. Remember what I said? The BL <laughs> over here stands for breech lock. The P, this P stands for professional. So, they made this, this range finder, right, with interchangeable lenses. But they said, how are you going to change the film? How, sorry, how are you going to change the lens when you still have a roll of film in here? There's no room for a dark slide, right? They wanted to make it nice and narrow, okay? Make the camera nice and thin. So what did they do? They added this wheel. Here's what happens. When you want to change from a wide angle lens from doing a group of 75 tourists, right? And then you want to, with your wide angle lens, and then you have a couple of two people that want a nice, intimate, tight portrait taken, right? Let me just show you. Now, here's the genius. How about this? How about that they the engineers at Fuji came up with a system where you turn this you turn this wheel here come on anyway you get the idea I can't pick it out right now you would just take this turn it and what would happen this is with the cover closed of course and you want to change the lens with the film in it you would turn it and in here is a curtain not a shutter curtain but it's the curtain that would close completely. You change your lens. Let's show you. Okay. Breech lock. All right. Canon came up with the breech lock, by the way. All right. Breech lock. You turn your lens. Hold this down. Straight up. Remember, this is the only way to change the lens with the camera facing straight up. Okay? Boom. Off with your lens. This is the 100 millimeter 3.5. Oh, by the way, there's only four elements in this whole lens. Remember, prime lenses, not zoom. Prime lenses. Less elements, glass, steels, light, and information. Okay? So now you can change your lens you would have the curtain closed right change your lens go in the back turn this zoop, that curtain would open up and off you go now here's the problem that curtain is the first thing to break on these cameras if you ever want to buy one of these the Fujika G 690 right let's open it if you ever want to buy this camera which by the way I ch just checked today August 5th 2022 from Japan these are still selling the ones that operate with a lens of course five hundred dollars that's only a few hundred less than they cost brand new in 1969 that's how great these cameras are they hold on to their value and remember what i said don't worry about spending money on camera gear you sell it okay so when you're looking to buy a camera like this okay this curtain that closes right to change so you can change your lens without messing up the film okay these never work these never work when you're looking to buy one see if the seller I remember what I said credibility you're looking for a seller with a hundred percent positive credibility eBay calls it feedback you know what I call it credibility you're looking for a, a, a seller that has a hundred percent not a 
under 92%, 92%, 99.2%, 99%. Point two percent is the lowest score you should ever buy from on eBay. And not that they have four feedbacks. You want somebody with hundreds or thousands. Okay, let's get to the point. If they don't mention if the curtain works or not, you'll usually see them say the honest ones. Stuck only goes out halfway. That's the problem with this mechanism. Stuck halfway. Guess what? You just roll it back, back into here. Mine is rolled back right into the side, and that's where it stays. I never use it. A couple of reasons. Number one, you really only need one lens, all right, for doing the kind of work that we do. You don't need more than one lens. You know, there's an old saying, one lens, one camera, okay? You use your feet to zoom, remember? Use your feet to zoom back and forth, okay? But talking about credibility here. If they don't mention it, that it works or not, that's a red flag. The honest guys will say, that nah, doesn't work. Curtain doesn't work. Those are the honest ones. And if the curtain doesn't work, good for you. Lowers the price. You don't need it. Okay? So let's close this up. Well, this also has a dial up in the front to go from 120 film to 220 film. That's archaic. Nobody's using 220 film anymore. Okay. Oh, and by the way, a little tidbit of uh, some knowledge. What's the difference between 120 and 220? Okay, I'll tell you. Stop bending my arm. The difference between 120 and 220. Yeah, 220 has more frames. It's a little bit longer. However, they couldn't keep the paper and the film on a longer roll. It would be too fat. So, you're only going to get paper for most of the roll of 220 film. Not all of it. All right. So, this is a little tidbit. All right. Probably that's why 220 isn't around anymore. Okay. Uh, plus, look at the price of it's like Portra 400. What would that be if it was twice as long? Geez, a, a box of five would cost you mm, $125. All right. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh,. I have my notes here. Uh, so it came out in 1969. All right, I told you why they came up with it. Okay. Uh, it has, there's no bells and whistles. No bells and whistles. You had to use a handheld light meter. None in here. Fully mechanical, right? No batteries. You can use this camera forever and not worry about that there's going to be an electrical problem, a problem with the computer or the wiring. There's none. All right, to use this camera, so I I don't want to encourage people using the Sunny 16 rule. This is me talking. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you're just going to be disappointed. Why be disappointed? We buy these cameras, we buy film, we spend our time in the darkroom, we're sending it out in anticipation, only for it to come back and go, uh, the exposures are all off because I use Sunny 16. Buy a Sakonic, Sakonic light meter buy it buy it used on ebay they last forever and they're dead accurate okay um in fact uh the photographer that i made the shout out to he'll make a comment in his recent video on the rz67 that he's glad his camera now finally has a built-in meter that he doesn't have to walk around with a handheld meter that's great Okay, but sometimes cameras don't come with meters. All right, so buy Sakonic handheld light meter. Don't spend less than a hundred. Okay, for a used one, get one that's a hundred bucks or, or higher. Okay, if you want a nice spot meter one, get one for three hundred Sakonic. All right, you will never regret that purchase. All right, and you won't have to rely on the Sunny Sixteen rule, which doesn't always work. I will be the first and only person out there to tell you that the Sunny 16 rule has disappointed most beginners than anything else. They think it's their camera. I don't understand. They use the Sunny 16 rule. I set the shutter speed to match the ISO, F16, sunny day. No, there's too many variables. There's too many variables.
variables. Where is the sun? Is the sun in front of you, on the side of you, behind you? Come on. Is it a hazy day? Are you in a polluted area? Come on. Bias a kind of can't tell light meter. Don't be disappointed. After you've done all this work, you've researched the camera, you bought the camera, you bought the film, you went to a location. Sometimes you won't be able to ever photograph that location or occasion ever again. All right? By the light meter. Okay. So, up here, this is just a cold shoe. All right? The Every lens... Every lens comes with a uh, socket, right? You have to use a PC cord, all right? These are leaf shutters. Wow. Why is a leaf shutter important? You can use your flash on any shutter speed. You can use a 500. You can use it at a quarter of a second, all right? Um, what else did I want to tell you guys about this? Um, super quiet, okay? All right, there's a lot of instances that you want to be quiet you don't want a big clunk shutter going off all right mirrors moving okay the rz67 is loud the rb67 that i had it's younger no it's older brother right there's a big giant mirror it's a single lens reflex it goes clunk clunk right like the pentex 67 right listen to this that's it. That's it. That's all the noise you're going to hear. You're in a, a situation where, God, if I take this picture, everybody's going to turn around and look. Not with this. Not with that. All right. Uh, let's keep going. A lot of information. Um, okay. So the rangefinder, right? Super, super bright, right? Right, this is um, one lens, right, that works in cooperation with the viewfinder, right? There's a little mirror, yellow mirror that goes back and forth, right? Range finder, just so recap. Here's your subject. You're looking in the camera. As you turn the focusing knob, right, out of focus, out of focus, out of focus, in focus, out of focus in focus all right simple simple and guess what if you're shooting landscape all day you put it on infinity and you're done all right so uh okay i think i covered everything finally uh let me just go over one more time valandis the shout out today goes to valandis go to his photography youtube channel V-U-H-L-A-N-D-E-S. One of the top film photographers in all of Michigan. I want you to go there. I want you to subscribe to his channel. Okay? Now, my channel. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel. Okay? Uh, right over here, there's a red square. Hit it. Like button. Hit it. Okay? Uh, next. Uh, go to my website. Look at my thousands of photographs. It's another learning segment. It's the part B to this channel. It shows you the photographs. It shows you, it lists the gear, the date, and the location. Okay? It's not a website where you can buy stuff. Okay? It's a learning website. You can go into the search box and put in a certain camera that you're looking for. If I used it in a photograph, it'll come up. Um, if you're interested in just my street photography photographs, search street photography. Okay. If you want to see photographs taken with this, the Fujika G690, put in Fujika G690. You'll see the photographs I took with this. All right. I have been a photographer since for, for the last 49 years. 1,800 hours of schooling just for photography, all right? Uh, I have a lot of information to give you guys for free. Uh, I'm giving back. I'm giving back to the community, the worldwide community, because you know what? Photographers, we learn from each other. I've learned from photographers on YouTube. Before YouTube, I learned from photographers 
in school or on the street, when I see another photographer, you got to communicate. And what better communication is this? You can watch these videos on your phone, at work, oops, at home, on a computer. Okay? Thank goodness for smartphones. You can watch it anywhere. All right. Website, CarmineTaverna.com. Email me anything you want to know. Anything about photography. Black and white photo at AOL.com. Well, you never hear people say AOL anymore. Black and white photo at AOL.com. That's my email. Comment below. Please subscribe. If you guys subscribe, it shows that I've hit a few people out there that can learn from me. <clears throat> I guarantee you, I like I said yesterday in last, yesterday's video, I watch religiously 50 photography YouTube channels. Religiously. Okay? Today's shout out, Valandis, Michigan, top analog photographer, top. Wait till you see his videos. He includes a lot of his work. You're going to love this guy. Okay, um, please subscribe. Have a great day. And I can't believe my Yorkies did not bark once. <laughs> Take care, guys.